So one thing that really irks a lot of people on the Internet and I've learned is bracing the reality of a situation, especially when it's something that you don't want to hear. Now, apparently a journalist, a financial analyst of some sort that's probably dealing with games, Takahashi Moshizuki, I think that's how you say the name, has come out to actually put out a report from something that was shared with them at Square Enix's earnings call. Now, this is somewhat third hand information because when I looked at the article on Yahoo News, basically kind of talking about it, it appears that Square Enix themselves are not commenting on the matter to confirm that something like this was said. So let's go ahead and actually kind of put that out there because this could be something where somebody might come out and, you know, clarify later on. But I think there might be some, you know, nuggets here to take a look at, if at all, this is accurate as reported. So apparently this person said, according to an analyst who attended Square Enix's earnings call, President Kiryu, who's pretty much the president of Square Enix right now, the new CEO, I think, said Final Fantasy 16 sales didn't meet the high end of the company's expectations and PS5's installment base was a limiting factor. Now, let's read this very carefully. It says it didn't meet the high end of the company's expectations. So possibly the company made expectations from a low end to a high end and Square Enix's Final Fantasy 16 probably landed somewhere in between there. Where it landed, we don't know. Maybe a little bit past the low end, maybe smack dab in the middle, maybe close to the high end, but just did not meet the high end. Or maybe they went with the low end, a high end, and a blow it out of the water, and it probably landed smack dab within low end and high end. So we don't know how they did their analysis. That's just information that we're not privy to. So this is what I wanted to make sure that I did in terms of coming out to, you know, break down the information as much as I possibly could from what I understand. Now, looking at the article itself, you'll see that there seems to be a few things that we got to look into. And this is an article here, uh, Vlad Savov, and this is Takahashi Mochizuki again. Uh, and basically this says, Square Enix holding company uh, shares suffered their worst intra uh, intraday drop in almost three years, erasing a little over a year's worth of gains after the company reported a 79% decline in operating profit. So these are other things that are actually going on within the studio as well. This is, I don't think this is on hundred percent related to final fantasy 16. So let's not go ahead and, you know, conclude that, Oh, final fantasy 16 has destroyed square Enix. Eh, I'm not an alarmist like that. I tried to take my time to, you know, basically pick out information as best as I possibly can. Hopes that Final Fantasy 16 would boost sales were dashed by the company's downbeat earnings report on Friday, driving the stock down as much as 15% in Tokyo on Monday. Shares were trading around 5,600 yen at midday, their lowest since May of last year. Both the topics in NESC and MSCI ACA Asia Pacific Index were uh, up around 0.3%. Sales of the latest installment of a long-running uh, role-playing title did not meet the high end of the company's expectations. Square Enix's president, Takahashi Kiryu, told an analyst on a post-earnings call Friday, according to three people who attended. So apparently they got this from three people. The tweet pretty much said, um, it says, according to analysts who attended. Okay, so that's probably where the three people were from. First released in 1987 in Japan, Final Fantasy was a pioneer of the fantasy role-playing genre, and with the franchise, uh, with the franchise churning out blockbuster after blockbuster in its early years, but momentum has been falling. The game's latest iteration, which debuted exclusively on a PS5 in June, sold at a much slower pace than its immediate predecessor. So I think this is what was going on. So because of the game's release, even though it sold a lot in its first week. It appeared that those numbers that were being hurled around Twitter, but because, you know, console wars are just insane, nobody can actually get to the crux of the matter. It seems like those projections were probably there, like, oh, maybe we'll be able to get these numbers. And that just did not happen. The Final Fantasy franchise's profitability is weakening and improvements will take time. CD Group analyst Junko Yam uh, Yamamura said in, in notes to investors. Tokyo-based Square Enix's maintained its physical year forecast and increased sales by double digits in the first quarter. It has 10 analysts ratings, it, uh, rating its shares a buy, 
10 holds and no sell ratings, which is still decent. And then, you know, the analysis continue to go on. If you look very carefully, this, uh, you know, person posted earlier about this situation, and it seems like a lot of people pushed back in a very interesting way. It seems like they didn't want to hear the truth. This is a three hour window between the first post that he actually put up that I saw and this new post. And he says Square Enix's stock price is falling at a lot, uh, you know, a lot after its Q1 earnings result that analysts said disappointing. The analyst said Final Fantasy 16 sales fell short of expectations and concerns ahead of uh, ahead is Final Fantasy's franchise's profitability is weakening. So it seems like the remedy is to just go ahead and put the freaking game on a PC platform. There is absolutely no reason that Final Fantasy should not be on PC. I don't play the game. I've known about it since I was a young boy. I remember in high school, it was kind of the big talk of everybody. I mean, I had a good friend who he, because of Final Fantasy VII back in the day on the PlayStation uh PlayStation, is it Final Fantasy 7 or Final Fantasy 8? I'll have to call him and ask him. We're grown men now, but he will not forget that. He was held back because that game basically, you know, held him back. That's how we became friends. He was my senior in school, and he played that game so much and didn't do his homework, didn't do his schoolwork, and broke all kinds of school rules to play that game. And that's how I knew that that game was absolutely, uh, uh, you know, a mess when it came to, you know, the game's uh, attraction or whatever it is. But it appears to me that the game, you know, is something that is loved by a wide audience. But it appears that that wide audience is not here to be able to go ahead and, uh, you know, support uh, the game because PC is missing. PC is a is a segment of the market that as much as everybody wants to talk about, oh, PlayStation has 40 million you know, units sold. It's still not in a position where it can sustain a lot of games. Sure, they probably got a chunk of money to be able to keep the game as an exclusive at the time that it released. But that's something that you can't necessarily translate to how many copies would have sold on PC and how many other copies would have sold on the long run. Because these numbers keep confidence and continue to keep the valuation of the company high. But when you see situations like this go on, then the valuation of the company takes a hit and can erase huge swaths of, um, you know, progress that's been made by the company uh, in terms of keeping its valuation and so on and so forth. So PC is the way to go, Square Enix. You know this, and we know you're already shaking hands with Microsoft and so on and so forth, but there is no reason to not bring this game to the PC platform. I mean, it just is the obvious move to make, and if they already signed to keep it as an exclusive, well, once that, you know, timed exclusive, once that window runs out, they need to go back and just basically port a PC version as soon as possible. But this is not the only reason. I mean, Forspoken was also another game that kind of, you know, probably cascaded a lot of things as well, too, coming out in the state that it did in January of the year. So we're not going to throw everything on Final Fantasy. But, I mean, the obvious remedy to this Final Fantasy, you know, lack of sales or shortage of sales, let me not say lack of sales, but shortage to meet expectations could have easily been resolved by just bringing the game on PC. Final Fantasy is is becoming more and more of a niche game as time has gone on. It had a wider appeal back then, but, you know, unless you're seeing some... I mean, I don't know. For some reason, I guess it's not a niche game. Let me not say that. I guess maybe there's just not as much interest because... A lot of competitors are starting to do some really interesting things. I mean, Elden Ring is still trending. If you go on Twitch, there's still somebody who's playing Elden Ring in front of a huge audience. Uh, you know, maybe there might be somebody playing Final Fantasy 16, but just other studios are able to bring games that have some sort of a bigger impact that... You know, if you're not going to appeal to Final Fantasy fans, which again, Final Fantasy 16, according to fans, kind of deviated from its original, um, you know, setup and is now moving to this high action, you know, sequence Final Fantasy game. So that's something that they probably need to go back to the drawing board and look at. But I want to go ahead and share this story and just talk about it because I felt it was quite necessary to point it out and to point out how, you know, it's easy for these companies to remedy stuff. I know they want to take cash on hand, but that cash on hand is probably, you know, on the back end going to hurt you in one way if you're not, you know, serving a larger community. Peace out.